then, folks, and a massive, great big Happy New Year to each and every one of you. You join me here today for another of Andy May's crash courses at the beautiful Partridge Lakes on Piper Lake. I've never, ever done a feature in the old wide world ever on this lake, folks, so I'm proper excited. So what does today's feature involve then? Well, open water we've got in front of us, folks, but it's open water with a bit of a difference. How many times have you just rocked up on a lake just, you know, and gone fishing without proper exploring what's going on underneath the surface of the water? We can see the top of the water, we don't know what's going on underneath it, yeah? So what we've got to do is find out what kind of bottom you're fishing on, Cheeky. Now on this particular lake, and the reason for today's feature is that there's underwater bars. Not ones that serve Carlin, Heineken and stellar unfortunately folks but underwater bars and their natural fish holding features and there's quite a few waters in the northwest uh, another one that i can think of straight away blundles where they've got these underwater features and they're so important fish holding that you've got to find them so what i'm going to be doing today is fishing pellets on top of the bar in a round sort of three foot and then down the slope uh getting towards sort of like the bottom of the bar which is just over four foot uh, I'm going to be fishing ground bait with maggots and a few pinkies on to target everything uh, swimming, you know, skimmers, everything. Skimmers, roats, carps, F1s. But certainly on top of the bar, we're fishing pellets. That's generally where you find the carp and the F1s like to, like to dominate. Certainly like when it gets a little bit warmer, but even for the likes of today, it's like, it's proper cold, folks, as you can see. Bobby hat on, neck warmer on, it is proper cold. Um, and it's just where the fish like to gather. You know, certain times of the day when... The trouble you've got on deeper water, it takes a lot longer to warm up. So when you've got shallow water, and in particular these bars, that water at some point in the day, usually sort of like later on in the afternoon, will be the warmest area of the lake. So that's where the fish like to be. So what I'm going to do, I have plumbed up, but I'm going to put plumb it back on for you folks and show you exactly what I mean and what I'm looking for. Then I'm going to put some bait in and then I'll talk you through the rigs, okay? So just let me get both top kits out first just so I can show you the difference I've got in depth. Now bearing in mind... The other thing you've got to consider on the bar that I've got, it's almost like fishing your short swim and your long swim. You know, we've talked loads about having your short swim completely separate to your short swim so that you're not splitting your fish, and that's exactly what I've done today, folks. So I'm fishing right out to me right on top of the bar, and then a good sort of, it's probably about 8 or 10 metres away to me left where I'm fishing at the bottom of the bar, if that makes sense. And this is what depth we've got. So, depth marker's on. Let me twist them round so Jakey can zoom in. He on them, Jakey. He's on them. So there's 48 inches. So that's just over four foot. I know my inches, folks. Don't you worry. So that's on when I'm fishing straight out in front of me, the bottom of the bar. And then this one on top of the bar, you can see there, there's three foot, 36 inches with just slightly over depth. And now I want to show you, obviously, where I'm plumbing to on these floats. So let's go to it. And we're doing it in one, as always, folks. You know what I mean? No messing about. I said, I'll talk you through rigs in a sec, but... Plummet wise, 20 gram plummet, just standard plummet. Now, I want to make sure that I'm plumbing up to sort of middle of the body. That's where it was before. Now, I have been away from my peg, folks, so who knows what, what manner of like mischief Jakey might have got up to. He might have put two foot on it. You know what I mean? I've got to, wa got to watch him. You've got to watch people like Jakey, folks. Now, I am going to be a bit rude as well. I'm going to have to turn my back on you because my peg, it's out to like my right hand side, and obviously, me being a right handed angler, it's blooming awkward. I suppose it could be like a runny old Sullivan if it's left-handed, but no, we can't do that, folks. Right, so <clears throat> let's get let's get out there then. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, actually, yeah, show it that way then, Jakey. So if I plumb up straight in front of me where my ground bait pinky maggot line is, where I'm fishing at the bottom of the um, bottom of the slope is, I'll show you the depths coming up and what I'm fishing on. Are you on it there, Jakey? Of course he's on it. Yes, you can see there, we're well off bottom. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to creep round. You following it, Jakey? <laughs> He's giving me a nod. I can just see him in my peripheral, folks. In my periphery, I can just see him nodding his head. Yeah, so you can see, we've still not found the bottom yet, but that's, oh yeah, I bumped a fish then. <laughs> that flow is just starting to, to come up a little bit. We're there. We're getting there now, folks. We shouldn't be far off there, there. So you can see that. Bottom of the bristle, yeah? Now I'm just a little bit further to the right. I've got some reeds on the far bank that I'm lined up with. There we go. Yeah, that's my marker there, middle of the body. Okay, and if I carried on 
come in, you know, a little bit more to the right, it's flat all the way. There's like little tiny deviations in the lake bed, obviously, you know, over the time. But you can see that's flat all the way. So I'm going to fish my pellets with me. I've got some wrap, a wrapper tape on me, uh, on my pole, so I'm lining up. And every time I'm going to be bang on there, every single time. I might put up that a tiny bit. I reckon Jakey's messed around with that. Yeah? So middle of the body, that's where we want to be. So that's my pellets with him. And then I'm going to go in with me. <clears throat> in fact, I'm going to feed that. I'm going to feed that first, folks, just quickly. Just tap a few few pellets in. As you saw where we plumbed up to. Because we don't always show. We, we show you on our floats where we plumb up to. Like, we'll point to it. But it's sometimes it's good to show you where we're actually plumbing up to. In fact, yeah, I can see. Look, get that there, Jakey. You can see there. Me, me, can you see me original mark where that little bit of grease is? And it has moved, so somebody has moved it. Could have been me. Could have been me, actually. So I'm going to put that to that, back to that original mark there. And I'm going to get, in fact, I'm going to do it through a big pot so I don't spill anything out. <clears throat> Got some two mils already done up, folks. Literally, all I am going to be feeding is that. What's there? Uh, 27 pellets. That's it. 27. Might be 28, actually. That's it. That's all that's going in <clears throat> on my pellet to swim. Just gonna go feed that quickly. Just, just want to give myself the best chance, hopefully, of getting a, getting a bite because we are doing it in one. So I want to make sure there's a bit of feed there. I'm happy that there's fish there because we've seen, seen a few jump, and also we bumped a few and been plumbing up. Now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna feed these from a bit of a height. There's like sprinkle them out a little bit. Bit of commotion. There we go. And that's that fed there. And the next one I'm gonna plumb up and show you is. At the bottom of the slope, yeah. So we're fishing on top of the bar. Selective baits like pellets, hopefully catching F1s, carp, but you know, there's a lot of skimmers in here, so we might catch them. But then this one instantly, this is the one where you're gonna get more of your bites on, yeah, your maggots, your your pinkies, and obviously loose feeding the ground bait, everything swimming is gonna come onto this onto this one. And obviously it's a nice fish holding feature at the bottom of the bar. Yeah, it's just like imagine sort of like a snake lake. Um fish like to gather in that deeper water at the bottom of the slope it's just where they want to be and it's exactly the same with this but if you didn't go out with a plummet on and plummet up you wouldn't know you had a bar in front of you if you're like me and the summer folks you know what i mean just put shallow on you don't know what's going under the water do you there might be a shallow bar in your peg you might be fishing on top of it who knows so plummets definitely they're not overrated folks i do quite like plummets so let me get plumbed in there and let me show you what i mean so i've lined it up with a tree in the far bank and there we are, middle of the body. Now, if I just keep at little babby intervals, just keep coming slightly to me, to me right, you can see there it's just starting to come up a little bit. Yeah? See, it just starting to come up a little bit there. And I'm going to go back out to me. This is my original mark here. There. If I keep going out to me left, you can see it's exactly the same depth there all the way. Yeah? So I'm confident that I'm at the bottom of that slope or the bottom of the bar, if you like. Now, obviously, <clears throat> check on your pole, you know, check all the, the, like, the other sections and all that. Make sure it's the same depth on all of them because sometimes there might be, like, big deviations in. But with lakes that have been here years, you know, obviously, the undertow, the currents over the years, they tend to, like, smooth things out. So it is what it is. It's not going not gonna to change much from what it is now. So I'll talk you through the rigs in a sec. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of baiting on, <clears throat> on that swim. Get that hook back in, get that hook back in there. Now this one, as I said, we're going to put ground bait in on this one. So what we're going to do though, is just put a few, few pinkies in, hardly any. Jakey's got that. Of course he's got it, folks. They're not even come to yet, folks. It's, it just shows you how cold it is, isn't it? I got them out of the bag early this morning, they're still not come to. And I'm just going to put a few magwise in as well. So what's that? Probably 20 pinkies and probably 15 to 20 magwise as well, red maggots, that's it. So they go on top there, I'm just gonna put some ground bait over the top and then just put that in there. So we've got, what's that, three quarters of a pot. Now, super sweet ground bait, I absolutely adore this ground bait, folks. You can mix it however you want, you can mix it, you know, with hardly any water and a little tiny smattering of water if you want it to break up instantly for like feeder fishing and that. Or you can mix it like I have today, really overweight, it's quite dense, it goes to the bottom dead quick, but the smell, folks, honestly, you open the bag, 
put a bit of water to it and the smell you get, you wouldn't use anything else. So Sony Bait, super sweet ground bait. It's a lovely colour as well, obviously, for this time of year. Because we've got like 18 inches of visibility. It is proper clear. But I'm going to say it, I'm expecting to catch fish, folks. Oh, am I? So that's going in. I'm not going to put more in than that. I'm not going to lose feed at all. I just want to, you know, old school wise, put my ground bait in and my feed inside the ground bait and just fish it out. So, get onto my marker. So my marker on this one is ending my pole on my back leg and I've got the pine tree in the distance. This is another grab big and just jumped here. There. And then we're just going to put that in. So you can see, obviously with that, you see that ground bait just come out and how quickly it's gone down to the bottom. That, obviously the beauty of that ground bait, it's going to be over an area, sort of like size of a dinner plate as it hits the bottom. You know what I mean? But the beauty of that, if I wanted to, you know, mix things up a little bit, I might not get a bite on pellets. I might want to change that top of the bar pellet fishing to ground bait. That ground bait will stick, you know, even on a slight um, slope, it's going to stick on the slope as well. So it's absolutely perfect. Right, rigs first, then I'm going to go through baits. Obviously, I've shown you a bit of the baits, so I'll show you my expanders as well. Uh, and then we're going to get fishing. As I said, we're doing it in one. So first one we'll go through is, let's do the pellet one first. Let me get that hooked into the bottom so I don't blooming up myself. Now, <clears throat> because of how clear it is, um, and because, like, obviously, fish can spook when it's fairly clear, and we're fishing in not shallow, shallow water, but shallow is three foot. I'm fully expecting them fish to be spooked off the top of your pole, so that's why I've got quite a bit of line pole tip to float, which we'll come to in a sec. But first thing is how fine this elastic is. I can't believe get it. Uh, so I'm literally, it's as fine as I go for like this time of year all through winter and it's the five slip elastic. I absolutely adore this stuff. I don't really use fives a lot other than when it's like proper cold and clear like it is now. I tend to go for like the sixes and the eights. I love that stuff. It's stood the test of time, folks. It tells you everything. Stood the test of time. It's brilliant. Now my reasoning behind this is once I hook that fish, I want loads of elastic come out, no commotion, and for that fish to just swim off away from me or go down the, the, the back of the slope or something like that. So nothing's disturbing me peg. That makes sense. I hope it makes sense. I'm waffling, folks, but I'm making sense to myself. Got a little tiny uh, sprinkle pot on there, which I'll be putting like a, a few tiny micros in. I don't want to go in with without a lid on or a little babby pot, um, put an amount of bait in and sneak it in. I want to sprinkle my bait around so I've got like a bigger area for them fish, certainly on pellets. So a little sprinkle pot and then coming down to the rig itself then. So remember me saying before about the distance of line I've got between my pole tip and my float. That's a good, it's a good sort of two foot or something. Uh, so I'm not risking spooking the fish. Certainly if that sun does come out, it's going to be even blooming clear with them folks and they will back off it a little bit. They'll back off your pole. So just be careful of that, just be mindful of it. I've not gone as long on my other rig because I'm fishing in deeper water. So, 0.14 AccuPower mainline is standard this time of year. Single number eight back shot on there. And then I've got a 410s F1 pellet float on. Uh, F1 maggot, F1 pellet, both do the same thing. Uh, I've just seen this because I, I wanted to use a yellow bristle today and I didn't have any F1 maggots in the yellow bristle. So I've gone for an F1 pellet. Simple as that, folks, isn't it? Tiny, tiny little bit of uh, bristle grease I've got on there. I've not got it out. Little tiny bit, just sort of like three or four mil down the bristle. Just so it really sort of like holds up and I'm not striking at any sort of false bites. And then coming down the rig, so that's set just over three foot. So you can see there, there's 12 inches, that's where I've got my last dropper shot and I've got a series of five number 10s spaced probably about an inch and three quarters apart, something like that. Yeah, so number 10, number 10, number 10, number 10 and then my last number 10 just above me loop to loop which in this instance is, it's 0.10 AccuPower and it's an 18s SFLB hook. So. Just nice and standard, you know what I mean? Uh, don't need to mess around with that. Don't need to mess around with the shot in or anything like that. Just nice and not positive, but not like overly light. I don't want to go down like 4B8's route or anything like that. I would if it was shallower, but with 3 4, you still want a little bit of weight down the bottom third, down the bottom end, just so you can really show up them bites. They're not going to be sort of like Ugh! bites or anything like that today. I'm convinced or not, but you know, they should be just nice and away bites. So shouldn't be missing any of them. So that's me pellet rig, that's what I'm going to start off on. 
my next rig, well, I've only got two blooming rigs today, folks. My other one, so for the bottom of the slope, exactly the same elastic, five slip elastic, exactly the same main line, 0.14, but not as much of a gap. Because it's a little bit deeper water, fish aren't gonna get spooked as much. Uh, but again, I want a nice soft elastic, so the fish aren't sort of like, I'm not bumping them and they're not going nuts in my peg when I hook them. I just want them to swim out my peg nice and natural. So probably around 16 inches of line. Again, number 12 back shot on just above the float. And float wise, because, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going for everything swimming in this instance. Yeah, with the likes of ground bait, pinkies, maggots, everything swimming is going to eat them. That's why I've gone for a slightly lighter float, lighter bristle, I mean, not, not lighter float. It's a 1.2 mil bristle. It's an F1 fine 412 float. So a little bit heavier float to give me that little bit more stability, you know, so the wind get up, but more for the depth of water. And obviously we all know how finicky them blooming skimmers can be, the bites. That's why I've just gone that little bit heavier. Potentially, I need to go even heavier than that. If it's mainly skimmers, I might have to go 414 or even 416. Again, we've done lots of videos on this over the years, even in shallow water, are how finicky them skimmers are. But generally speaking, they're not too bad on here because they're, they're a good stamp skimmers. They're not like them hand size. I'm going to catch blooming hand size skimmers now, aren't I, folks? They're not generally the hand size skimmers. They're normally sort of eight ounce to like two pound, that kind of thing. So, <laughs> shut up, duck wax, I'm talking. Uh, so that's why you can get away with not using as heavier droppers. Uh, so, just over four foot, coming down the rig, and then with this one, folks, I've got my favourite sort of tapered rig. Just because I'm not sure what I'm going to catch, I might get the odd roach, so I might have to lift the rig out, hold a tight line to it, let it fall through, or it might be that the skimmers might be watching that bait through, I don't know yet, but one thing's for sure, that tapered shotting pattern, oh my days, it's amazing. Uh, so you can see there, so on my pellet one, my shots ended at 12 inches, the tapered one in just over four foot, you can see there, that shot is just on 18 inches. Now these are number nine, so I've got three number nines on, no, four number nines, sorry folks. That one's split in half, just to make that uh, float sit exactly where I want it. And then we've got a number 10, a number 10, and a number 10, and we are on exactly the same uh, hook length. We are on 0.10 AccuPower hook length to a size 18 SFLB hook, four inches folks. And that's it, simple. Don't complicate anything in fishing, folks. And that's it, that's my rig's done. So I'm gonna put that one back over there. And then I'm gonna get on it. So, pellet swim first. Now, because it's been, I don't know, blooming waffled for ages, haven't I, folks? It's probably been like 12, 15 minutes since I've fed. What I am gonna do, in fact, no, I've not even taught you free bait yet. I've got, I've got some Sonu expanders in there, folks. Some formal expanders. I've got some Fin Perfect two mils that I soaked as soon as I got here. Uh, just soaked them in water, just so they were covered, and they're absolutely perfect now. I've got half a pint of mixed pinkies. I've got a pint of red magwise, and as I say, I've got me the super sweet ground bait. Dead simple, nothing complicated with it. So first things first, we're going to go on with a formally expander, like so, and I'm just going to put. A few in the pot, like literally. That that might be too much. Hardly any. But yeah, I wanna I wanna sprinkle them out just so they go over a bit of an area. I wanna see what's what. I might actually leave it first before I sprinkle some in. I'm gonna decide when I'm shipping out, folks. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to be rude and turn me back on you now. But it's all in the name of fishing, folks. We wanna see what's going on. So ship out, ship out, ship out. I've got me, I've got my tape on my pole, that's my marker. I'll lay my rigging first, come back to my marker, which is there. And what I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna leave him to start with, just to see if one will, one will take that bait. Now I'm not properly, hey, oh, do you have a bite then? I mean, I think we had a bite then, straight away, folks. Say what? Oh my neck. I'm gonna say, I've not really properly checked this float, so it might, might be like a lighthouse, so it might, it might sink, who knows. That was definitely a bite though, that. I'm sure it was. Oh, blooming that was it. So I'm gonna tap them pellets in. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe that, folks. Blooming that. that I reckon that was that same fish from when I, uh, see what I mean about that elastic though, yeah? So let it swim out of your peg, so it's going back down the other side of that slope, which is perfect. Now, obviously, if there was a lot of F1s there and you were catching then, yeah, by all means, just go that little bit heavier, heavier elastic. I've probably gone to sixes or even an eights or something like that. But if you're going too heavy, 
uh, then all you do is just bump, bump them. You see all that elastic coming out there, it's absolutely perfect. Oh, that's proper. Yeah, that's done me heading that. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to sit there for like 20 minutes. Just shows you, doesn't it? I bet the water temperature is no more than sort of four degrees, folks. And we've had one straight away. That was definitely that same fish before. Definitely. Definitely. So they are big chunky F1s usually, these. Look at You can see how clear it is. I can see that blooming fish three foot down there. That's mad, that. Now, you saw what I did as soon as I hooked that fish. Uh, sprinkled them pellets in. So what I'll do is the same next time. I won't free that next time. I'll just see what's happening. And then I'll give it sort of like 40 seconds to a minute. And if I don't get a bite, that's when I can put some bait in. Look at the state of them, folks. They are beauties, aren't they? Absolute beauties. This is why you can get away with like, obviously fishing light. I mean, we're not fishing light light. We've got point ten up length on, but it's the elastic what does the uh, what does the job, folks. We bring this round this way so Jakey can get on it. God, I was not expecting that. Oh, new year, new me, folks. You know what I mean? On it. We are on it. Definitely going to have another go there. Ooh. It's only trouble when it's blooming clear. They can see you and they just have that last dart off. Yeah, we got him, folks. We have got him. So that was no trouble then, was it? Dead light elastic, fives elastic. And we've got like a near three pound one in the net. No trouble whatsoever. So let me get him up. <laughs> and then show him he's blooming free. Oh, he is going to be, I'm going to say, he's like a nine out of ten. Him. But let me show you the kind of fish that you can expect. Being that little bit more. Look at him. He is absolutely stunning. Beautiful sort of near. It's about 212, 213 him. Beautiful fish. Just shows you what you can expect when, you know, conditions are right and you've got everything bang on and, you know what I mean, with your feeding and that all important plumbing. Yeah, finding them bars. So we'll have another go on that. And so we are fast forwarding everything, folks, and I am doing everything in one for you. <clears throat> so if we catch another one fairly quick on that, I'm going to come off it. Again, not putting loads of micros in, but sticking to my hand after catching that fish. There's literally sort of... Probably 20 ended up going in there, that's all. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to have a go on that. It's obviously ground bait and pinky line, maggot line. So I'm not going to feed again this time because I fed just after I up that one. But you notice when I did feed, I made sure the fish was out of my peg. Oh, that was amazing. Let me lay that in proper again. There we go. Back on my marker. Oh! Right, he's not even proper settled yet, he was just watching it going down, wasn't it? That's it, that's what we want. I wouldn't have thought we'd get another one too quick after that, with how, they say, how shallow it is, how clear it is. That'd be where maybe you've got to catch one and sort of come off it for 10 minutes or so, go back on it, catch one, come back on it, that kind of thing, you know what I mean? Or just move around, you know, on, on top of that bar. But it just shows you, even though it's like proper, proper cold, where the fish, you know, <clears throat> they want to be on top of that bar. And certainly, obviously, the, the warmer it gets, they will come right on top of it. Sometimes you'll see them bathing and you'll see all, like, the, uh, the bottom erupting, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to feed a little bit of bait this time, then, around me. There's some up there. My float moved a little bit, then. I'm just going to feed a little bit of bait on my float. There we go, hardly any. Hardly any. And what I'll do, I'll let that... them pellets sink a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, I'll lift my rig out. And then put it in. Put it in again, so it's roughly falling at the same... same speed as my... Uh, as my micros and my pellets. I mean, my hook bait, we fall in at the same speed now. Probably do with another shot on that float, to be fair. But, when them fwans and that take your bait, it's not like when you're fishing on, you know, for silverfish, where everything's got to be really delicate. F1's carp, when they have it, bites are amazing. <laughs> He's on. So it's noticeable, obviously, that, that fish we've had, I reckon it was the same one that we missed a bite off. It's just that one that's coming to the peg. 
and it's typical for the time of year. You normally catch catch one or two really quick and then it just slows down so you've got to you know keep priming the swim and then come back to it later on which I think is what's happened there. Now difference being hopefully on me uh, <coughs> my more na my natural baity one you know where I've got me my maggots and my pinkies and my ground bait hopefully we can you know catch sustain from that swim. I'm not saying you want from here definitely you will do but you know later on in the session maybe. I'm not going to spend too long on this because you saw what it was like folks when there's one there douche it's going to have it straight away. I had one little shake on the float uh, about 40 seconds ago but it's telling me that you know catch one you need to come off it and then go somewhere else and that's the beauty of having another bait option like natural bait catching everything swimming we've got our selective bait pellets and I've got a non-selective one where hopefully <coughs> we're going to get you know a lot more bites from the silverfish likes of the skimmers and the roach perch goujons just getting bites this time of year folks now obviously because we're doing this in one I'm not going to spend any amount of time obviously on on any swim um it's purely just to obviously show you what can be achieved and what to look for more than anything on on these kind of waters so I'm going to give it another I'm just going to lift it out because obviously both bites I've had have been they've been watching that bait through through the water so I'm just going to give it this last go I'll leave it another 90 seconds to sort of two minutes I have got a few more micros left in my pot I'll put them in and then just leave that swim and then try try my ground bait one where hopefully there'll be some fishes. You'd expect that's where the fish would be at this early stage in the deeper water at the bottom of the slope, but it's always worth a look on, on top, on top of the slope. Certainly the warmer it gets, 100%, that's where eventually they'll end up. And I'm convinced today, you know, later on in the session, um, that's where the fish will end up as well. Even though it's probably only, only going to get a couple of degrees warmer, if that, today. It doesn't take much for the for the fish to to switch on and go into that slightly shallower water, especially with it being overcast as well. If it was clear, I think it'd be a different story. Uh, but then, it, you know, obviously that sun, it's heating up the shallower water. It heats up a lot quicker. So, oh, I don't know. I'm just waffling now, folks. But yeah, definitely, I need to. I'm going to come off this swim now and go on my ground bait one, and hopefully, we'll catch there straight away. So. It's tempting to just blooming leave it though, folks. It really is. It just looks amazing, that. Go on, the fwans. But no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Am I going to do it? I'm going to leave it? No, I'm not going to leave it. Right, so, put a few more pellets in. There we go. So we've still got some micros in there. Probably another sort of 10, 10 or 12 gone in. So what I'm going to do is come off this line now, folks. Now, match conditions, blooming heck. I'd still be on it, you know what I mean? Fish like that, you can't come off fish like that. But... Without it, with, with how quick that first one was, I'm just impatient, aren't I? So let's get on my natural baity ones. Now, what I'm going to do on this one is put my favourite single red maggot and a disco pinky. My ultimate favourite winter hook bait in the old wide world, folks. It's just look at that. Get in on that, Jakey. If you were a fish, how could you resist that? Disco Pinkawai and a single red magwai, the bestest winter hook bait in the world. So let's get on it. Just hook myself there. I'll feel that later on. Can't feel it now. Right. Now, bearing in mind, obviously, where I'm at the bottom of the slope. <clears throat> imagine that slope. That slope's veering up that way. Now, I'm just at the bottom of it here. Yeah, and the slope's coming up that way. I'm going to lay my rigging out this way. So that rig, that line rather, is coming back in. Even though I'm on flat bottom, it's coming into the ledge nice and natural, if that makes sense. Because the fish are going to be coming in that way rather than sort of travelling down that slope, if you like, yeah? So, let's see if there's some early fish on this one. Again, everything is dead early, folks, isn't it? So, swing that rig out that way, line up with my marker, and then bring that float back. Let it settle, let it take them shots on. Again, I don't know what the shotting's like on this, folks. 
So you can see the difference of that tapered one. You're just watching them shots come through. So we're down about to the bottom now. So we've got a bit of a bit of a shake. There we go. Oh, and there we go, folks. That I mean, so that fish had that, like literally. Well, not, it not even got to the bottom. It was just about settling, wasn't it? Give it that little twitch and add it. But this is what you can expect, and this is the beauty of um, this style of fishing. Yeah, bit of ground bait, some natural baits in, catch everything swimming. If I was in the mats, I'd have probably swung him, folks, but you know what I mean? If I'd have gone to swing him today, it would have fell out. But fish like that, I said we weren't going to catch on the size skimmies, didn't I? <laughs> I told you, bloody mud. But joking apart, their little weight adder up as they are, you know what I mean? Sort of four of them, and you've got like probably just over a pound, that kind of thing. So it's things like that that you can expect. Now, I am going to change with me. It looks perfect, but I know what it's blooming like. Every time I try, every time I go in with the same bait on, folks, I never get a blooming bite. But when Jamie does it or the bagger does it, they get like bites straight away, but I've got to change mine every time. It's mad, isn't it, when you get used to things like that. What are you like, Jake? Are you like a bait lever on her or? No, Jake is a changer like me, folks. You know what I mean? He likes to change. So, change bait. I'm, I'm fully expecting the same thing again, you know, to get a bite almost straight away <clears throat> because of how we fed that, yeah? So, again, same thing. Swing your rig out. Make sure you're lined up with your marker. Hold that tight line to it. Because, obviously, the fish there, you know, there's going to be everything swimming from, like, roach, perch, gudgeon, obviously, skimmers, carp, F1s, and they'll watch that bait through. That's what we're looking for. So it's just about settled now. So if we don't get a bite, I don't know, usually I'll leave it sort of 30 seconds. And if I'm not getting bites, that's when I'll start lifting and dropping. I do love, you know how much I love a movement. I'll just notice a bubble further past that then as well. Um, see it then, again. About two, two foot past my float, just another bubble. Now, it might be that lifting and dropping is not right. We might start bumping a few fish because they're slightly over depth. So it might be that lifting the whole rig out and laying it, again, uh, laying it in is right. We'll see. Let's give it a first lift and drop, see what happens. But certainly I'm expecting more action, or so, certainly a lot more action uh, on, this, on this kind of line. Um, bottom of the, of the bar, flat bottom, but obviously with what bait we fed. I expect a lot more signs there. Don't want to lose feed, anything like that. It's creating too much of a, of a bigger area. Just going to use me, me pot to feed and my ground bait. <clears throat> I'll change up baits, by all means, you know. Single pinky, double pinky, single maggot, dead maggot, you know, that's, that, that goes without saying. But, you know, it's all about showing you what you can expect on these kind of waters when you've done your plumbing correctly. I'm not going to give it longer, yeah? Um, probably give it another sort of five minutes. But what I want to do is show you, and hopefully I'm going to catch another F1 when I go back on that other swim. Oh, see there's something big in my swim there then. It'll just move that to that float, so I'm going to lay that in again then. I want to show you by resting that swim, it'll have been sort of 15 minutes, I suppose, before we go back on that again. Hopefully there's going to be another fish there by leaving it. It might be that I don't have to top up this one. I'll see, I'll see what the response is first. It might be that I need to top up more frequently. Depends. If it was like more sort of roachy and, you know, that, that kind of fish, or certainly bigger fish, you might have to top up a little bit more often. But if it was more roachy, you can get away with leaving it a lot longer. But then likewise, if it, if it was roachy and things like that, that's when, you know, loose feeding potentially could come into it. Um, but at the minute quite happily just leaving it that bait on the bottom there we go that was a dink then so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a little bit off that float it only just sort of like settle down hardly anything that but it shows you doesn't it even though it's proper freezing cold you can carry on getting bites but these are like these can be the worst fish in the world to hit though and we're saying before you don't catch on the size skimmer <laughs> what have you had on this one let me know the size skim but that's a little tiny bit bigger yeah What's not wrong with them? Ooh, absolutely nothing wrong with them. You'd, oh, I'd catch these all day, folks. Absolutely stunning. And that was in the bottom of the lip as well. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of depth off that float. Just literally hardly anything. In fact, I'm going to show you how much I'm taking off. So when I'm taking depth off or putting it on, so if I was putting it on, 
I'd trap the line. Say I wanted to put like an inch on, I'd trap the line and then push my float up to that so I know I'm being exact. Now the opposite here, I want to take like, what's that? A centimetre. Yeah, 10 mil line off, that's all. So what I'm going to do is trap that line at the bottom of my float and then just push my float down to my fingers there. Yeah? So I know I've taken that sort of like 10 mil off me off my float. I'm going to go on with... I'm going to do double pinky this time, folks. Them skimmers love double pinky. They love everything. They, they just love pinkies, love mag. They love everything. I'd probably... I'd, I'd catch on pellets on the swim, folks, but... I don't want to be overly selective. Yeah, I want like a, a ticky overline, which is what I've got. That's the beauty of that ground bait and everything. And then I want a selective line, which is what I've got out there. So I'm going to catch one more on this one. Again, bearing in mind match conditions with how this is gone, I'd be, I'd be staying on this, but I'm not in a match today, folks. I'm, a, I'm showing you a lovely lot, what to expect. So I'm going to catch another one on this one. I'm going to see if there's another big one waiting for me on that other line. Oh, Disco Pink is nearly the job, but you saw where that bite came then, folks, yeah? That was on the drop, like through the water. Now, if that, that can sometimes be nuisance fish, little babby roach and that. That's why I don't want to go down the loose feed um, style. If it was like bigger roach, you know what I mean? Then, yeah, by all means, start. But if it's some little tiny babby ones, then it can be an absolute blooming nightmare. So it's far better to just leave it and fish, fish the bait out. So I'm expecting different different bite. It should be a lot quicker now. So I've taken that little bit of depth off it. It should should get a lot quicker bite. With it being so calm, I do I do need to dot that float down a little bit more. I probably used this rig last time when it was a little bit windier and it's breaking all that surface tension up. That's my excuse for it being like a lighthouse, folks. <coughs> Watch the rocks. It's a bit like a lighthouse, isn't it? Now it's noticeable um, that two two of the bites that I've had on this swim have obviously been through the water. That last one, it was settled a bit. So it may be that we just need to keep lifting our rig out and dropping it through, or just them, you know, them little movements. Makes a difference, had a little dink then. So I'm not gonna leave it too much longer before I lift the whole rig out. Oh, a little dink then, yeah. So it just shows you how. So what I'd probably do if I was match condition, I'm not going to do it today, folks, but match oops, I hit the tree. Match conditions, I'd probably change how them droppers are. I'd, I'd put one potentially on. Oh, is that that's a roach? Go on the roach. Yeah, if they were that size, then <laughs> I'd be windmilling casters and all over the place, folks, if they were roach that size. And again, look where he's up, bottom part of the lip. That's not where we want to be hooking them. But the reason he is up there is because we've disturbed that sort of like cave in the rig, if you like. Yeah, when I started lifting and dropping. As long as we're netting, folks, and they're in the net, it doesn't matter, though, does it? You know what I mean? So, lovely roach. Yeah, there's loads of there there. Blooming neck, it wouldn't be long before I did start windmilling loads of baiting. So I'm going to come off that swim now, but match conditions, I'd still be on it. But what I'd probably do is change one of these droppers for like a number nine make it more positive so I can see them bites a lot quicker because you can see how horrendous the bites are or just dot that float down a little bit more. The trouble with doing that though sometimes is as soon as you get like a little bit of a, a ripple on the water or something changes in the air temperature, you know, puts pressure on the water, your float starts plumbing sinking. So I'd probably just change that for a heavier, heavier dropper. Right, I'm going to have another quick go on this one because we've left like, what's it been? It must have been 15 minutes. It must be been 15 minutes since we've been on this swim. I'm going to see if there's another one there, just to show you how sometimes it pays to rest swims. Now again, not putting loads of Marcos in, sort of like 15 or 20 there. I'm not going to feed again to start with, because if there's one there, it'll still be around over that bait. <coughs> yeah, it just pays sometimes to, you know, sort of like switch between the two, but 100% I'd still be on that line in a match. Obviously, you'd be looking now and what, seeing what people are doing, but the way it's been, it's been right nice there. So I'll lay that rig out, come back to my marker, and then hold a tight line. That line off top of my float. So if it's like it was before, we should get a bite fairly quick. You see the angle I've got on my pole, though? It's well away from my pole tip. I'm not spooking the fish. Had a bit of a wobble then, I think. 
Something happened then, definitely. But, oh, there we go. See what I mean? Yeah, that couldn't have worked. I nearly missed that blooming bike then, I know, folks. That could not have worked out any better, and that's what you can expect. Now, what I'll do after we get this one in, I'm going to go back on it just to see and confirm that what we're doing is right. So if we don't get a bite, you know, five minutes this next time, then it shows you that you need to rest it 10 or 15 minutes, catch your bonus fish, go back, get catch your, catch your top-up fish. Yeah, you'll actually skim as your roach. But eventually, you know, I'm convinced carp F1s would rock up there, as they would on this swim as well. Oh, this is amazing, isn't it? I love fishing, me folks. Just, and how good's that elastic, you know what I mean? Fish just swim out of your peg, no commotion, no splashing, even though it's right shallow. Just, just amazing. And they're all like wobbly F1s, these are. Just, just, oh, folks, I can't tell you. They do sometimes when they go on your blooming platform, though. So you notice how I, like, I fed that, as soon as I up that fish again, I fed me pellets, tapped them in. I'm not going to give it loads of pressure, just enough. I don't want that fish going nuts or anything like that. Here he comes, he, no, he's not. These are big ones, these folks. These are big ones. Oh, we missed him for the plumbing swam over me plumbing there. Pressure, pressure's on, isn't it? I mean, pressure's on, isn't it? Come on. This shows you they don't go nuts this time of year. It's just more sort of steady pressure from the fish, really. Here we go. He's there. Another beautiful one. Another near sort of three pounder. This one, not as big as the first one, I don't think. I don't know. He's a bit chunky. Again, that top lip, perfect. I just happened to look away for a second, so I do apologise if I was a bit slow on the strike. But again, another beautiful F1. Probably the same size as that other one, isn't it? So that's two fish for well, over six pounds, isn't it, we've got in there. Awesome. Now I'm going to have a quick, quick go, but I don't want to leave it too long. So obviously this is all in one. I don't want you getting too bored, folks, you know what I mean? But I just want to show you, if it's right, obviously we're not going to get a bite. It'd be amazing if it went under, but I can't, I can't see it. Just after what's happened... I can't see it, but you never know. You never know, folks, do you? So, a few more pellets in, hardly any. I'm not going to feed them. I'm going to use the the last lot that I put in when he hooked the fish. Let's feed. <clears throat> and let's see. I'm just going to give it five minutes just to see if we can snare another one. If not, then we know it's right for sort of like going forward into your session. You know, it's right to, you know, sort of prime it let it settle and then go back onto it. It's all about working out what's what's best on the on the day. There we go, that's set. I keep forgetting to put a I mean tiny shot on that, don't I? It needs like a 13 or something, or a 12. But as I said, it's even though it is a little bit high, it just shows you when them F1s take that that bait. But I mean they have it, don't they? This usually sort of like later on into the session, um, <clears throat> that's when you can expect to, you know, put sort of runs of these bigger fish together, these F1s, um, sometimes carp, but carp can be a bit pongy in the winter, can't they? But certainly F1s, that's when generally the, the runs will start. To start off your, your match or your session, the first few hours usually, it's like it's been. Catch one, rest it, come off it, go in the other swim, catch some fish, your little weight builders, and then go back on it like we've just done. Obviously, there's a there's a pattern forming already. Yeah, as I've just touched upon before. Go on, the seagulls. Um, them fish came within within a minute. You know, obviously the first one, doosh, instant. Second one just had. Then you know, 50 seconds maybe. This is taking a lot longer. Now, if I just waited and waited and waited, I probably would eventually get a bite. But what you've got to consider, folks, certainly in match conditions is the fact that that swim, yeah, we've had two skimmers for sort of like nine ounce, we've had that rope sort of like three or two or three ounce. You can see how you can build your weight up. So it's them fish that you're catching in between that you need before potentially you have your run, which you will do later on in the session. And that's what it's all about. And that's why I love fishing on these like feature kind of open waters like we're here today. It just gives you more options. You know what I mean? 
Um, I love it. So I'm not, I'm not going to give it too much longer here, folks, because of the pattern that's forming. I want to... <laughs> it's like, it's one of them, it's hard to come off like when the, the size of them fish and big clumpy... Bleh, but I just want to show you the difference with, obviously, there's still going to be fish there on that line. I think we need to change that rig a little bit. I'm not going to do today, but obviously bear in mind, folks, match conditions, I would. So what I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to top that swim up again with just the few pellets that I've got left in. So it's probably 15 pellets in, come off it, and then just show you what I mean. So go and catch your bonus fish. Don't leave it too long. Try and catch your second one, but the fish will tell you. They'll pop up and like, I'm not here, Andy, I'm over here. No, no, they won't do that. They won't do that. Yeah, the fish will tell you, and it's like, pretty easy to work out <clears throat> what's happening and obviously like match conditions not sometimes pleasure fishing but match conditions you've got it even better because you know people around the the lake they they can sometimes make the changes for you if you like you know what i mean you'd be keeping an eye on them and if they're not catching the bonus fish on on whatever then you're going to be changing so double disco last time we had that roach i've gone back onto a pinky and a, and a magwai and I'm fully expecting this to go straight away again, folks. So swing it out to the left. Remember, presentation every time. Bring that float back, get it in position, hold a tight line. Let's give it a little bit of a shake, just some back shot sink. Fully expecting a bite really quick. Because we've left it alone, <clears throat> again, still on that same bit of ground bait and, you know, a few pinkies and maggots that we put in. Not felt the need to top up or anything. Well, from before, I might have done if I'd have carried on this line. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> it, it tells you obviously the, the the time frame it takes you to catch fish. As soon as that changes, or you know, two, three, four minutes without a bite, that's when it's telling you that you need to put a little bit more bait in. It's different if you were loose feeding, because you, you're constantly putting that bait in. But we're not doing that today. Um, could do potentially. Certainly after that blooming last roach that we had there. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a movement. I thought that had gone a little bit quicker, to be fair. I'd be fair. I did think it had gone a little bit uh, bit faster. But it might be that it needs a top-up, folks. Simple as that. Five minutes. That's all I'm going to leave it. Even though it's cold, five minute, minutes between sort of like bites would be all you'd leave it before you come back and change some of either your top-up, which is probably what I'd do in this case. The fact that it's not gone... I think it might have had a little dink then. The fact that it's not gone quick this time tells me that we could have been wiped out you know what i mean let's face it like one big wobbly car could have come in <laughs> nailed the lot obviously it's coming to them commotion them fish that we're feeding big bream f what anything or we could have had like a number of them smaller fish they could have nailed it because it's been a good sort of half an hour between since i fed anything there maybe a little bit more so it might be that we just need to top up that swim which is looking looking like we need to but well, that was a little dink then. I don't know if that was my back shot or my bite, folks. That's why I didn't strike straight away, I promise. It's not that I forgot to strike. Um, but, yeah, so by the time, obviously, you've gone in, top this swim up, again, eight, ten minutes is passed, and there's probably going to be another F1 waiting for you or a carp on, on top of the bar on that pellet swim. It's just, just brilliant. I love it. I love it. I'm not going to give it too much longer, though. And then it's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a tiny little bit of bait in. And then just give it that five, five to ten minute frame. See if we can catch another F1 before I go back on that swim again. And hopefully it'll be lift off again. We're getting a few fish. Come on, the fishies. Oh, you have a dink then. Sure, them little movements get you more bites than, than anything else. Certainly when it's like this, folks, when it's like flat calm still, nothing going on. There we go. Oh, how did we miss that? I was going to say, there we go. That was a perfect bite. Edit that bit out, Jake. I don't miss proper bites, mate. Obviously, that was a liner. <laughs> Just shows you, though, doesn't it? Yeah, them little babby movements. I can't believe I missed that one. It's the best bite I've had. still be there it'll still be there so that was off that was off a little movement just after it 
So what I'll probably do this time is just move it just a little bit more often. Just to impart them a bit of movement in it. Love it. I'm convinced it makes a difference. Obviously not when you're fishing, no, little tiny, all the little tiny piles of bait, setting little traps, but when you've got your, your bait over a pretty decent area, <clears throat> sure it makes a difference, just showing that bait to the fish and the fish will watch it fall down so it looks nice and natural. Yeah, definitely, definitely needs a top up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back and it's been, what's it been, 10 minutes since I tried my pellet swim. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go back on this just to show you the difference. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, folks. I'm going to do it. I'll show you the difference. Putting that little bit of bait in. I'm not going to, topping up wise, I'm not going to put loads in at all. Not even, not even half a pot. Literally. <clears throat> so, what have we got? Just going to put, what's there? Hardly any matter. Seven mag, I can't, I can't do an odd number. Eight maggots, yeah, it sounds daft, doesn't it? Eight maggots and probably the same amount of pinkies, that's all we're doing. I'm just going to scoop them up into that. So there's hardly anything there, not even, well, it's probably like a quarter of a pot. Yeah, hardly anything. So I don't know what, because I'm not going to leave it that long with how that's fishing out there. I know I'm not going to get a second fish on it. So I'm going to be on this potentially within five minutes. Now I don't know what the response is going to be. I, th I think we'll catch on it, you know, sort of straight away, but... Who knows, we might not do so. Rather than risk putting loads in, I'm just going to put a little, little tiny bit in. There we go. So, hopefully, it's working out. Oh, it has been, folks. It's been going blooming well, hasn't it? Someone's got to stop soon. <laughs> you can't keep going like this for us. Then, hopefully, we're going to catch another one on this line. So, on with a formula expander. Again, I'm not going to feed because... That bait will still be there from from last time. Are there any micros? Yeah, literally sort of 20 every time. None. Can you imagine? Did you ever think, folks, like when you first first saw me sort of doing this these features and that, that you'd ever see me put 20 micros in a blooming pot? Normally it's like, yep, yeah, that'll do, innit? it? Honestly, I'm changed, aren't I, folks? Told you, new year, new me. Change. Blooming change and everything. Right, I still forgot to put a blooming shot on that float, but it doesn't matter. So, swing that out. Back to my marker. Get that settling. Hold a tight line. And hopefully, if how it's, it's been how it's been, should get one there pretty quick. And I'll strike a bit quicker this time, I know. Come on. But if it doesn't go quick, again, the, the last two times I've been there, it's gone. Well, obviously, the first time went really quick. The last time, within 50 seconds, it's gone within sort of like a minute every time. I'm not going to give it... Oh, that's a different fish. That's, that's a skimmer. So it might be if we catch a skimmer there, then a few skimmers moved in. Now, obviously, skimmers shoalfish. I mean, F1's a shoalfish, but we can see it's not been right for F1 so far. So it might be that we can go straight in and catch a, catch a skimmer there. You know what I mean? Obviously, the beauty of pellets is, yeah, it's a selective bait, but skimmers adore pellets, folks. You know what I mean? You're not really going to catch roach on pellets, if at all. I'm going to have another do there. Um, but skimmers absolutely adore them, so if we can get them big wobblers rocking up there, and, you know, obviously, just put your fish in there. That's what it's all about this time of year, isn't it? Again, I, sh I shook them pellets in. 25 that time, folks. I can't resist it. Shook them pellets in, so hopefully <coughs> there'll be a fish there again. Now, if there's a skimmer's there, I wouldn't have thought there'd be you know anything big there, but it might be that the shoulder skimmers are moved in, which would be nice. Well, it wouldn't be, not when you're catching blooming near three pound fwans. But we'll see what happens this time. If it's another skimmer, I'll come off it and go back on that line to show you the difference in topping up, yeah, in the, the fact that you go back on it get a bite straight away. If it's an F1, I'll come off it anyway. So either way, folks, I'm gonna come off it, but not just yet. I'm gonna give it two minutes. Oh, that was a little dink then, forgot to strike, but I'd have said that was like a, a skimmer bite, a popper dummy bite. Oh, maybe not. 
<laughs> what do I know, folks? It might be a big skimmer. Oh dear. It's something large. I think it might. What is that? It's something large, folks. I thought it was a big one. I thought it was a big blooming poppadom then. So, yeah, so basically, folks, uh, forget your natural baits, just fish pellets. Jamie's right, just fish pellets, folks. He's right, and he's gonna he's gonna watch this. I'm like Andrew, I've told you for 20 years, just fish pellets. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I was not expecting a one there after a little skimmer. That skimmer must have been bloody starving. This is a big one, this folks. I don't want to bring him round. I want to try and knit him in one. This one. Yeah! <laughs> Look at the state of these. That's three F1s we've had, so sort of, I want to say, eight and a half, probably nine pound. I can't get me bloody mittens on this one. He's up right in the top lip there. Let's get that away and show you this one. This is amazing. This is like, oh, look at the state of this one, folks. Absolute bronze beauty. Look at that. Oh, they look like peas in a pod, aren't they? Not quite three pound. They're all sort of like two, 212 to 214. Oh, right. So what would I do in match conditions? I'd probably I'd be back on that one. The fact that I've had a skimmer and the F1 in such a short space of time, I'd be back on that pellet swim, 100%. But it's been five minutes, there thereabouts, maybe 10 minutes since I last put that ball in out there. Well, not even a ball, was it? A little tiny top up feed. I want to show you the difference. Hopefully we'll get a bite fairly quick on it because I'm convinced that's what had happened last time. It's obviously that the fish are feeding, folks. Yeah, Even though it's freezing cold, it's obvious that the fish are feeding. So I think last time I tried it, there's just no bait there, basically. We had that little, we had that wobble, didn't we? Um, <clears throat> that, yeah, that proper bite, that probably the best bite I've had for the last five years and we missed it, but it could have been a liner. So on with double pinky, just to see what's in the peg. Just to see what's in the peg. And hopefully it's gonna go straight away. So I'll swing that out as normal. Line up with my marker, back of my pole. And then hold that tight line to that float, give it a bit of a shake, get it going. There we go. Now this should go. I know I said it'd go pretty quick last time, but again, it should do now the fact that we've uh, put a little bit of bait in. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? So that fish took it on the drop. I think it's another decent roach, this. Double disco pinkies, right? I'm going to get some casters out of the van, folks, and start windmilling loads of casters in and catch these big roach. But it just shows you, doesn't it, that top-up feed, yeah? And obviously the different areas of your peg. So, oh no, it's a skimmer, I thought it was a blooming roach. It's a bit of poppadom. Yeah, boy! I think I'm going to end it on that one, folks. Now, obviously, imagine, like, it's hooks fell out in the net. Yeah, top-up fish like that, sort of six-ounce fish. Yeah, that's what you're looking for in between. Let me get this hooked up. That's what you're looking for in between... Um, your sort of bonus fish lines if you like yeah your, your carp your f1 lines on top of the bar where you'd expect them fish to be uh when it does warm up a bit later on into the session certainly like into springtime and that and then at the bottom of the bar or bottom of the shelf if you like that's where you know you're putting the baits in that you're going to catch everything swimming where you can just just continue to like top up yeah keep putting them that weight in your net basically keep catching them fish keep putting that weight in your net and I was not expecting it to be like this today, folks. I was I was expecting maybe one F1, but I was expecting sort of like bigger skimmers. You know, obviously it changes over the years. I've not fished it for a few years here, folks, uh, but it's just been amazing. I want to get back into it, but obviously I fast forwarded everything. If I was in a match, I, w I wouldn't have tried that swim again that I've just had that skimmer off now. I'd still be on that pellet line simply because we had that skimmer, then we had an F1. You know what I mean? So you go back in again in five minutes, if you've not caught a fish, you're coming off it, priming it again. You've seen every single time we've worked it out to a T. You prime it, come off it, go back on it, catch a big one, feed it, come off it, catch some silverfish, go back on it, you catch another big one. You know what I mean? It's just like, it, it's like, it's, it's glaringly obvious what's happening today. So hopefully you've got some out of it, folks. If you can, if you can 
picture any lakes that you know close by to you that have got these sort of like bars and shelves in get on them as i said there's, there's quite a few in the northwest that i can think of and it is eye-opening where the fish like to gather there can be places where you don't think they'd be because it's so cold i mean if we had an aerial view of drone over that i reckon we'd be able to sort of like maybe see the fish flashing it is that clear you know what i mean like three foot of visibility down here in front of us so just shows you get on it folks plumb up the right way use the right gear the right tactics and certainly the right bait and you won't go wrong you'll have the best sort of wintry cold days fishing session in the old wide world thanks very much for watching as, as always don't forget to like subscribe to the sonny baits youtube channel and you know obviously hit the notification button and that'll remind you when we're putting these fabulous videos out for you all to enjoy yeah